decrease the load or increase the capacity. Decreasing the load is removing everything that the heart is now facing. For example, if you have vasoconstriction or any other, if even if you have no vasoconstriction, if you dilate the blood vessels, especially preload and uh, arteries and uh, veins, uh, uh, arteries and veins, then your heart load is significantly decreased. Uh, that means in lower um, ox oxygen levels also, the heart will be able to pump, will be able to pump the blood into the uh, system. Okay. The next thing is that you can, if you increase the work capacity, that means if you um, dilate the coronary artery that has been blocked, then that means that you are increasing the work capacity of the heart by providing adequate amount of blood that it needs. Okay. So the drugs we were talking about were nitrates were the first ones. Okay. And we were discussing about this and we were discussing about short acting and long acting nitrates. Uh, short acting light nitrate being uh, nitroglycerin and isosorbide dinitrate when you give sublingually. Both of these drugs can be uh, given for treatment if you use sublingual isosorbide nitrate and triglyceride uh, trinitrate tri or nitroglycerin. These drugs can be used for treatment of the attack. That means the attack is already started, the pain is there, uh, and if you immediately take the drug, and this drug is the one that is advised for this patient to keep in its, his or her pocket. Okay, so that every time uh, they feel this sort of pain and other symptoms, um, they can quickly take the drug out and then use it. So that and it's very rapid acting. Triglyceride. Both of these drugs can work within minutes. Okay, uh, and long acting drugs are not much of effective in this case, though they are effective. But the effect of will start late, which is not of big sense. Okay, So the same drug isosorbide dinitrate can be used as a long acting drug when you use orally. Okay, And this will act for longer so that you can use this not only for not not only means you don't use this for uh, for treatment of the disease or the condition, but you use to prevent attacks. So whom who are supposed to prevent this attack? Those who have more than two, three episodes of this uh, um, attack in a week, okay, sometimes in a day. So if you have those, that frequent amount of symptoms, then it's advisable that you take prophylactic dose, okay. Uh, and other drugs like beta blockers, beta blockers, propanolol, metoprolol, antinolol, what do they do? They will decrease the um, uh, heart rate and uh, inotropic, it's negative inotropic effect and uh, negative chromotropic and negative dromotropic effect. That means it will, it will decrease the um, uh, force of contraction of heart and it will decrease the heartbeat, which will decrease the long uh, walk load of the heart. Okay, so that means it might provide some um, rest to the heart. Okay, calcium channel blockers again, these are vasodilators. And I told you last time that nitrates basically are phenodilators and uh, calcium channel blockers are more um, arteriodilators. Though nitrates and calcium channel blockers both dilate both the arteries and veins, but if you compare their uh, uses or their uh, specificity, then nitrates are basically uh, phenodilators and high dose nitrates are arteriodilators and calcium channel blockers are mostly arteriodilators. So these drugs can be combined to get much more effect uh, in this people. Okay, and potassium channel openers. I told you that potassium channel. If you open potassium channel for a long time, then the cell will depolarize, hyperpolarize. Sorry. So you know that calcium is only activated. Calcium channel is only activated in the depolarized muscle. If you remember, I talked about this uh, in the previous class that the cell is depolarized. That means uh, I told you that if the polarization is minus 40 or less, then only calcium channel is opened. OK, so if you maintain that potassium potential difference above minus 40 uh, millivolt um, potential difference, then your calcium channel will not open. OK, so that things uh, that thing can be achieved if you open potassium channels. If you open potassium channels, it, it will it will not let the cell to uh, to deep into this this minus uh, negative millivolts. That means it will not be 
polarize. So hyperpolarization will cause calcium channels to block. That means nicorandil will be uh, indirectly acting calcium channel blocker. And dipyridamol is a very interesting drug that will uh, is a very good vasodilator. This is phosphodiesterase inhibitor. I talked about this, this in the last class. So again, we'll be talking about that today. So again, I gave you this uh, topic, now this uh, classification uh, to abort, that is glycerol trinitrate or, or nitroglycerin and uh, isosorbide by dinitrate uh, if you use sublingually. And the other drugs that are remaining, including dinitrate oral, is for prophylaxis cause, okay? And uh, other drugs. So, so what is the mechanism of action? So mechanism of action is basically very easy, okay? So to understand this mechanism of action, I would like to remind you something from, um, from the first semester, okay? If you remember acetylcholine, I just uh, took this uh, topic out um, last class as well, but I'm going to remind you uh, nevertheless today as well. So acetylcholine, what does acetylcholine do? Basically acetylcholine will constrict every smooth muscle that you have, okay? So that is why uh, acetylcholine will bronchoconstrict, isn't it? Acetylcholine will bronchoconstrict. It will constrict all the smooth muscles. That is why there will be secretions, okay? If the sweat gland smooth muscle will uh, constrict or they will contract, then the sweat will be released out. All the vacuoles and, and then these uh, uh, cavities or sacs that we have, including biliary uh, sac, that is a uh, cholecyst, Sorry, uh, what is that called? Gallbladder and uh, other um, places from where liquid will come out, glands, these will start secreting things because of constric uh, con uh, constriction of or, or contraction of this smooth muscle, uh, which will release its content. Okay, uh, so that means, uh, but still, still, acetylcholine is a vasodilator. It's not very effective vasodilator, but it is vasodilator. So very, this seems to be non-logical, isn't it? So uh, smooth muscle is there in the blood vessel. Smooth muscle is there in the sweat glands and even in the bronchus. But there is bronchoconstriction, but there is vasodilatation. Why is that? So this was a problem that uh, early scientists uh, um, faced in that, at that time. Okay, And I just talked about this in the previous uh, first semester class as well. So this problem again was so they didn't understand why this happened. So they thought that there should be a mediatory molecule or something like that, which acetylcholine will activate and then that thing will dilate. So and then they theoretically they named that as EDRF, okay, endothelial derived uh, relaxing factor. They thought that this, since since this acetylcholine receptor were there not in the muscles but in the endothelium. And they, they theorized that this endothelium, uh, endothelium uh, uh, muscarinic receptor is activated by acetylcholine and that will release something that something was not uh, known, but they called this EDRF, endothelial derived relaxing factor, because it used to relax the smooth muscles and then it used to uh, give this vasodilatory reaction. So this thing, that EDRF was basically uh, later on was isolated as nitric oxide okay nitrates no okay this no is a very very potent vasodilator so why i am talking about this because moa of nitrates is they are no edrf donors easy enough isn't it so these are e, uh, in, in, since our body produces edrf uh, nitric oxide from endothelium if somehow if you are able to um, deliver this no into the blood and then it will again vasodilate. So what happens, and you can give nitrates from outside, it's very difficult, it cannot be absorbed, it will destroy itself, okay? So if you have a nitrate drug, all these nitrates, okay? Nitroglycerin, mono, mono, uh, mononitrate and dinitrate, all trinitrate, all these things, drugs will donate NO to the blood. And you know that NO, uh, is a very good uh, vasodilator and I'll, I have a mechanism of action how it works in the coming slide. Okay, so NO activates uh, guanine cyclase, increasing the intracellular level of cyclic GMP and cyclic GMP is the one that will um, uh, that will promote the dephosphorylation of this myosin light chain uh, enzyme that leads to relaxation of the smooth muscles. So this is the photograph. So this photograph, this uh, chart is very important 
in the sense that it has two mechanisms of action in the same photograph you can see one is the calcium channel blocker another one this one uh, this is the mechanism of calcium okay i showed you this when we talked about calcium channel blocker and this is the mechanism of action of nitrate okay you can see and and i told you last time as well the, the sole mechanism of both of these drugs, calcium, is that if you just block this receptor, it's the mechanism of action of calcium channel blocker. And, and uh, uh, the mechanism of nitrate is very easy that it will release this nitrate. Nitrate will, this is only the mechanism of action of nitrates, okay? But it's not sufficient that you just tell these things in these both the drugs, okay? In calcium also, you don't can't even just say okay, it's uh, just blocks the receptor. You have to elaborate slightly. And nitrates also you don't always say that it's just a donor of NO. Okay, you just tell them how NO will vasodilate. So that means this NO is liberated here. So two ways: one, it's uh, NO is liberated from the endothelium. You can see, and nitrates will uh, donate NO, and that NO will potentiate or this activate guanyl cyclase in this activate active form. Okay, guanyl cyclase into activate active form. This is an enzyme that will convert. Uh, GTP into cyclic GMP. Okay, the cyclic GMP is the one that will will phosphor dephosphorylate. This myosin light chain uh, phosphor phosphate. This one is there because of this calcium. You can see. Okay, so this this half of this reaction is because of calcium, and the rest is because of this um, uh, cyclic GMP. Okay, and the cyclic GMP is produced with the help of nitrate you can see and uh, that means if you block this sorry if you block this calcium then there will be no uh, phosphorylation okay and if you if you uh, introduce no then there will be increased increased dephosphorylation both of them will uh, bring this to this smooth muscle to relaxation so relaxation means it will dilate the blood vessels here okay so other than that, just uh, just giving you a hint for a very small thing. This is uh, like this one is just sildefanil. Sildefanil is I talked about this is phosphodiesterase inhibitor, and and then another is dipyridamol. I talked about that in the um, uh, classification as well. So dipyridamol is also a very good vasodilator because it will it will prevent destruction of cyclic GMP. So phosphodiesterase enzyme, PDE enzyme is an enzyme that will destroy cyclic GMP into GMP only and GMP is not active. Okay, so now what our um, sildenafil or uh, dipyridamol does is that it will, it will block the degradation of cyclic GMP. So it will keep on um, uh, relaxing the blood vessels here okay so dipyridamol is very good vasodilator but one thing is we don't use it quite regularly why just keep it in your mind i'll tell you in coming slides so basically the the basic mechanism is to donate no so what other, what happens after you donate is that it will reduce oxygen consumption by reducing cardiac preload some and some after load why i'm telling you some i'll tell you in the coming slide that nitrates will only uh, uh, dilate the arteries in higher doses okay and we don't take in higher dose we take in uh, uh, lower dose and that will be effective enough if they even um, reduce preload only okay the venodilators as a venodilatation so if you need both then we can add calcium channel blockers so which will decrease preload as well as after load in this case okay so they can be combined they can be combined together to achieve both atrio and venodilators which will be better than adding the uh, nitrate uh, nitrates dose okay so one next is redistribution of coronary blood flow towards the ischemic areas if you remember i showed you that um, schematic diagram with beakers of blood i'm going to show you in the coming slide as well so I'll, I'll explain you this thing over there. So what basically it means is it relaxes bigger coronary arteries, that means uh, collateral circulations, uh, so that it can redistribute 
blood from the non ischemic area to ischemic area via collaterals okay um, is that chart okay this is there but before before that i'm going to show you how it works and then i'll i'll tell you how uh, this ven venodilatation works okay the first is that i'm going to show you this so how does it work first it is dilates the veins okay the main mechanism is dilating the veins i told you arteries is the secondary thing dilating the veins so increase peripheral pulling of blood in the veins because of venodilatation venous return is decreased so i am talking about this so many times said that the preload is the thing that the blood that reaches your ventricles and which is ready to get squeezed from the uh, cardiomyocytes so that thing that load inside your heart is uh, the preload and what it is dependent solely in veins because the veins are the ones that will deliver the blood into the ventricles so if the veins are dilated then the pathway is now congested the blood is remaining in the venous system and not returning to the uh, heart that means decreased venous return somebody wanted to ask me some question no okay so it will reduce the venous return that means the, the preload is decreased and the uh, in diastolic size of the heart is decreased that means the preload so so more the blood size of the in, in diastolic size is increased more blood comes so less blood blood comes over here the in diastolic size size that means the filling of the heart is not that much so th they will reduce the cardiac work so next which is not the sole uh, only in high dose is it is uh, dilatation of arteries that this calcium channel buffers does but no as uh, is nitrates in very less significance with very less significance that means uh, it will decrease the total peripheral resistance of this artery system and then after load is decreased so this is done in um, uh, basically it will reduce the oxygen consumption of the heart because heart now needs to do very uh, less amount of work it doesn't need to do vigorous work oxygen consum consumption will be reduced so lower dose this is the one and high dose this is the one so this uh, this thing i wanted to explain you in detail today so i hope you understood so this if you remember this photograph i tried to show you this photograph to show you that this uh, how this uh, uh, arterioles which are very very f fine arterioles uh, which d deliver which have the this um membrane is quite uh, permeable which will um, supply oxygen to the cardiomyocytes that area is dilated you can see normally okay this, this one is dilated you can compare it with this with normal arterial tone fully dilated, uh, dilated arterials because of this arteriomyositis block over here okay so the next one is the effect of nitrate you can see nitrate will dilate this collateral blood vessel here so because of this you can see the beaker is receiving equal amount of blood though this is not dilated but this is dilated so because of dilate dilatation of this collateral arteries the redistribution happens from here to here okay so mm, from here blood comes and it, it comes here crosses to the other side and to this big how this collaterals will work this is highly schematic okay guys no, but there is another drug i was talking about dipiridamol i am repeating this drug because it's not because it's very important drug it is not used dipiridamol is not used but to make you understand is very it's very necessary okay uh, i will talk about that when time comes in a few after a few slides so what are the pharmaco pharmacokinetics of all these drugs is all drugs are lipid soluble except this mononitrate okay uh, mononitrate it is the longest acting drug okay all have high fast fast, fast metabolism okay they are, they all have fast high pass uh, high fast fast metabolism that is why uh, you taking the drug from oral route will never act as uh, uh, treatment of this acute attack you cannot use this drug as treatment only nitroglycerin is used because it is fast metabolism that means the liver so nitroglycerin is taken sublingually uh, and and uh, dinitrate is taken sublingually that makes it 
accessible to this site of action very fast, bypassing this liver, which makes it very efficient. OK. Uh, so let's talk about individual drugs right now. OK, nitroglycerin in the first one. So nitroglycerin is very interesting drug. Why? Because it is it is available in the tablet, but it is not a tablet. Okay, the tablet is basically uh, empty uh, bulk of matter. Okay, it doesn't do anything. So it is an absorbent uh, tablet which is soaked in this liquid uh, liquid nitroglycerin. Okay, so it is so, and then there is a covering out uh, the non permeable cover. Uh, of this tablet and this tablet will remain uh, this nitroglycerin uh, volatile liquid will remain in the matrix of the tablet so that means this tablet if you expose this to sunlight or if you don't uh, you use it um, exposed to air for a long period of time then this tablet may evaporate out okay before your you being consumed you before your patient consuming that so if you, you should ask the patient to store this tablet very uh, in a good way okay so uh, sublingual tablet onset is very very fast one to two minutes uh, and that and the half life is one to three minutes that means the onset is very very fast and then and the duration of action is also very short okay so that has some beneficial effects it doesn't need a long duration of action because the pain if subsides then we don't need the adverse effects the adverse effect being i'll tell you later on but all if you come accumulate all the adverse effects of uh, nitroglycerin it is throbbing headache guys okay just remember this nitroglycerin and all the nitroglycerin tablets it's not like you are using headache as all common adverse effects so uh, for example if i ask you adverse effect of some other drugs you'll immediately tell me tell me uh, nausea vomiting headache okay here it's not just headache, it's throbbing headache. If you don't write throbbing word over there, throbbing of a headache with pulsatile headache, it doesn't, uh, it means that you don't know, okay? Because everybody knows that uh, adverse effects, you just write nausea vomiting and headache, okay? It's not with this one. This is a very significant headache. Why I'm significant in telling you significant headache? Not only that it is headache, but uh, headache is the proof that the drug is working, okay? So the pain on the heart will subside, but the the person will feel the pain if he is feeling the pain but the sub, uh, pain in the heart isn't didn't subside that means it's not uh, reversible now so if the patient needs to be rushed to the hospital because the effect of the drug was there the pain was seen uh, headache was seen but the enzymal pain didn't go away that means it might be evolving mi so rush the patient to hospital this is one method that you can measure the uh, clinical symptoms clinical effect of this drug I hope you understood. Not only uh, you, you got sublingual tablet, you got sublingual spray as well as sublingual um, in, intravenous as well as I didn't write about that, but there, there, is, there is transdermal patch as well. Okay, transdermal patch is basically for prophylaxis. This is uh, oh I didn't write here because nitroglycerin is not used for prophylaxis. You can use other other drugs as. Uh, transdermal patches as well okay but this one since, since you need this immediately the effect should be immediately so either you use it uh, sublingually intra buccal inside your buccal cavity or uh, sublingual spray there you have an available spray uh, can or you can use uh, intravenous which is very similar to spray and it is not very difficult so people used to used to they has they have to get an assistance to have the intravenous uh, um, treatment. So uh, people prefer sublingual or a tablet even, okay? A spray or tablet. So the another one is dinitrate and very interesting one you know that this is that it has two doses, okay? Sublingual peak concentration is in six minutes for acute attack and half life is 45 minutes. Again, you can see if, even if you use it sublingually, then the peak concentration is um, slightly longer than this uh, nitroglycerin. Okay, so if you use this sublingually, then it is treatment, and if you use orally, you can use that prophylaxis. So, unlike nitroglycerin, it goes under metabolism. Okay, the primary initial metabolites is acesorbide mononitrate, okay, and acesorbide 5 mononitrate. Both of these drugs you know, were found 
by this way. Okay, this isosorbide mononitrate. Sorry, uh, mononitrate. Isosorbide mononitrate was discovered thanks to isosorbide dinitrate metabolism. Okay, so they got this uh, isosorbide mononitrate from the metabolite meta metabolized uh, isosorbide isosorbide dinitrate from the uh, patient's body, and then they developed it outside, and they found it that this. Isorbide uh, mononitrate is longer, even longer acting than this dinitrate. So now they discovered a new drug, though it's an isosorbide only, uh, but the chemical substance, uh, chemical structure helped them to produce, uh, make this drug longer acting. Okay. Another thing is, since I didn't talk about this time, time when to give this nitroglycerin because nitroglycerin is the drug that is used for treatment and any time the treatment is there uh, any time the symptom is there you can you should take that drug so there is no time you take it in your pocket whenever the attack is there you take the drug okay you know, i don't i will not tell you to take this at morning in the evening but this drug is basically since it is a prophylactic drug you should be taking this in a timely manner okay uh, and a timely manner means you basically if it, you are using dinitrate then do not take this drug later than 6 p.m. So this thing is very tightly associated with that uh, uh, headache thing. OK, how I am telling this is that headache is because of venodilatation. You know that it's uh, nitrates are venodilators. So venodilatation of the uh, your uh, your skull, your head veins, OK, your venous pool, sinuses, when sinuses over your in your head will start dilating because of this and they will accumulate more blood in that area it will grow heavy it will uh, give tension to other parts and then there will be throbbing headache and throbbing why because pulsatile manner if the blood since the headache is because of accumulation of the blood so every beat of your heart will um, will make your headache worse because it will push the blood into that venous sinus okay so because of that every every heartbeat will make your headache seem to be increasing so that is why it is throbbing pulsatile type of headache is there and because of that if you stay awake and if you if you are upright then it will be uh, the the gravitational force will draw the blood down down less amount of blood will be reaching your head if you lie down after you taking these drugs then the blood will flow to the heart uh, to the head and then the headache will increase more okay that means if you take this drug at 6 pm in the and late then obviously before the drugs effect is wearing off you are going to lie down and sleep in the night and after sleeping you are going to get the headache okay so this drug should be only given before 6 pm okay in the morning in the day in the afternoon okay but once 6 pm is there don't use this drug Otherwise, there will be the patient will complain of night headache. Okay, guys. Similarly, mononitrate. I talked about mononitrate is how you, how people formulated this mononitrate. This mononitrate is derived from isosorbide dinitrate. I just talk, talked about that. And scientists people found that this has very low phosphorus metabolism, so you can use it orally. Lower than others. Okay, so. Half life is four to six hours. That means only once a day dose is sufficient for this. And um, and to make it last even longer, we have SR preparation for this. Okay, this is SR is sustained release preparation. The tablet is going to release uh, isosorbide mononitrate slowly, slowly in your intestine, which will make this uh, mechanism uh, sorry um, effect long. Okay, so what we need here with this prophylaxis treatment is we need the effect to be long enough so that we don't need to take these tablets frequently. OK. Uh, and the next thing here is not to be given later than afternoon. I talk, I wrote this afternoon here because some say after one, some say after 12. I don't know. OK. And if it is SR, then in only one drug in the morning, six o'clock or up to 10 o'clock in the morning. After that, SR tablets never take. Why? SR is slow releasing and it will keep on releasing the tablets till afternoon and that that will end up as throbbing headache in the night. So summarizing things, I survive mononitrate 
not in the only in the morning not not even in the afternoon i survive dinitrate not after 4 uh, 6 pm and i uh, nitroglycerin i don't comment about this because uh, one the effect is so short that it doesn't matter okay uh, and the first uh, and the second thing is that uh, you have to take it whenever even if you, if you have a problem your pain is arising in the uh, in the evening that means 8 7 8 o'clock in the evening then what do you do you take the drug at night to glycerin no problem uses all for all nitrates stable angina stable angina is the classic stenocardia angina okay stable angina why i am calling it stable angina or uh, why we call it stable angina because angina is there either you take nitro nitroglycerin or you you lower your um walk of the heart without drugs that means whatever you are doing you stop it and rest then the pain will slowly decrease and go away so this is stable it's stable some pain is there but it's stable it doesn't grow okay so for acute attack sublingual nitroglycerin or acerbid dinitrate can be given three times in a row okay so why i am telling you this is the maximum effect comes after three doses so if you, you want to use, if you used it for the first time the patient's pain didn't go away you do use it for the second time and after 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 5 after 5 to 10 minutes uh, the pain didn't go again you use it for the third time so th after third time the pain didn't go so that means the pain is not supposed to go and the pain is there because not because that there is uh, there is no um, effect of the drug but because the uh, uh, stenocardia is now evolving into mi or you know, unstable angina so that thing i just told you before also that that thing can also be measured with how much headache the patient got and this will be different in individual patients some patient will get very severe headache normally as well people some are some people do not even get any headache for those people who don't get any headache you cannot you cannot judge by this way but the people who or the patients who uh, have this type of headache you can judge with that, that method okay so for prophylaxis what you do you know that is dinitrate or mon mononitrate given orally okay and i told you how to give it not later than the uh, uh, time i just told you so not only in stable angina but in unstable angina also the effect of the drug is, the the effect is very precious okay though it may not subside for example in unstable angina though you, though the pain didn't go away no problem in in myocardial infarction nitrates will not treat the case but they will help in treatment okay so why because this will nevertheless they, this will decrease the heart load this will it will increase the oxygen delivery which will be uh, beneficial in even myocardial infarction but um, it is not the sole drug there are other drugs that should be used in unstable and in mi and variant angina principal angina i told you in when i was talking about calcium channel blockers this angina and even in the previous class this uh, angina pectoris very uh, principal or variant angina is not because of atherosclerotic patches in the uh, coronary artery it's because of abnormal spasm condition in the coronary artery okay and that will lead to the uh, decreased blood flow in the heart and because of it's not that you are in, you have a plaque and when you increase the work load you are getting the pain it's because whenever the spasm is that there then you get the pain it might be night pain it might be any time so, so without association with physical activity okay in principal as angina so in that case also uh, you can get, you can get nitrates because nitrates i told you that uh, it is coronary artery dilators so if the spasm is there then the coronary arteries will get dilated and the spasm will be taken off okay nitrates not only uh, relieves the spasm of this uh, blood vessels i told you that it will release the spasm of biliary artery biliary artery esophagus anywhere so it is a very potent um, vaso and muscle relaxer in ca congestive cardiac failure again Your heart is not able in CHF is the condition where your heart is not able to pump the blood efficiently. Okay, so why it's not able to pump the blood efficiently? Because it's not strong enough, or it has some other problems that you cannot pump it. Okay, so if you decrease the walk load, if you if you preload and afterload for the heart, then again uh, the disease or the compromised heart is a uh, also able to pump the blood if given that the work is not 
intense. Okay, so this will decrease the intensity of the uh, load of the heart. This drug. So in CHF you can use. Other told you in this slide as well that uh, esophageal spasm. Uh, you should. Uh, I'll tell you about what it is. Biliary colic. There will be pain because of spasm in the biliary tree. Okay, or there might be foreign substance like uh, cholelithiasis. Okay, the stone in your uh, biliary tree, uh, and in some cases, uh, and even in cyanide poisoning. Okay, I am going to talk about this cyanide, cyanide poisoning. Keep in mind, uh, you know what cyanide is. Eh? Okay, it is potassium cyanide is the I think it is the most potent killer in the world. They say, uh, and if you if you just it is very fast it kills you that so that. Uh, if you just lick it or put it in your tongue, you are going to die. That is why no scientist, the the rumor or I don't know, I didn't read it in a in a uh, legitimate source. But people say that scientists they don't know the taste of this cyanide because the one who one tried to, to test it died before being able to test. Okay, and superficial spasm, superficial spasm. You should know about this. If have you heard about uh, pani or keko Nepali in Indian people. If you understand this, this means that you have, your water is stuck in your esophagus. The um, the thing I'm going to trying to explain is that if you drink water if, when you are very very thirsty, plus your esophagus is very dry, then uh, and especially if you drink this uh, sugary water, Coke, Fanta, Pepsi, uh, Sprite juices, then uh, because of uh, that your your esophageal tone of uh, taking the your fluid down is disturbed okay this uh, peristaltic movement is disturbed because of that two waves of peristaltis will combine and then get spasm the very very high high spasm will be there and you have severe severe pain in, in this substrate area i have experienced this uh and many people have experienced while drinking especially from this bottle okay in this case if the pain is very very severe then you can use this uh, and this drug can even relieve those type of pain adverse effects the first thing uh, that will appear in this screen about adverse effects obviously will be throbbing headache okay don't just write headache that means here yeah, you don't understand and this headache is you write everywhere headache so i don't even count this headache as adverse effect nowadays because any adverse effect i'm going to check your papers <laughs> everywhere you are going to write uh, headache and uh, nausea and vomiting this is not that type of a headache this has a very significant headache uh, in in nitrates okay flushing sweating hypotension palpitation again all of this because of vasodilatory reaction okay meth hemoglobin in a uh, in the coming slides, I'm going to close this uh, dots about uh, cyanide poisoning and meth hemoglobinemia. Okay, but now just understand that uh, it's there in KD3 party as well. Uh, meth hemoglobinemia is occurs when you have high dose of uh, nitrates. Okay, nitrates uh, will will deliver nitrites. Okay, in your blood, nitrites and nitrites are the ones which can react with hemoglobin and reduce the ferrous state of this hemoglobin and create meth hemoglobinemia okay and meth hemoglobin is not is the one that cannot conjugate with oxygen to deliver the oxygen okay uh, instead of hemoglobin combining with uh, oxygen the this meth um, radical or this meth is combined with hemoglobin which makes it unusable okay and this one thankfully is not very severe Otherwise, the patient patient may suffer from hypoxemia, hypoxia, because yeah, the uh, oxygen uh, delivering or oxygen transport is now disturbed because of increased amount of methemoglobin in the blood. Okay, and tolerance, tolerance is that is why tolerance is you know you know that tolerance uh, means that every successive dose of the drug. If you, even if you take the same amount of drug, the effect will go down. In other words, to to achieve the same level of uh, efficacy as the previous dose, the next dose should be increased. So that is your body is tolerating the effect. OK, so that tolerance is very high with this drug. That is why people are not advised to take this until unless it's absolutely necessary 
do not take this drug as prophylaxis. Why? If you take it prophylaxis, you are going to take it daily. If you take it daily, then the tolerance is high and successive drug doses will not be able to deliver an adequate amount of uh, effect. So that is tolerance. Okay. So for the patient who can, who are able, you should only give treatment dose of nitroglycerin, not by dinatide and monometer. Okay. To prevent this tolerance, because this is a very highly tolerant drug. In, uh, that is why we don't give it, we don't use it more than thrice in our row. Okay. Because of this tolerance. Okay. This thing. Interactions. Okay. For interactions, this figure, we are talking about interaction now. Okay. Well, the, the topic we have shifted into interactions with nitrates with other drugs. So you can see. Since the mechanism here with calcium and, and, and uh, the nitrates is similar, one will dephosphorylate, one will phosphorylate the myosin light, kind, light chain. That means if you combine this calcium and uh, nitrates, then the vasodilatory effect is going to be more. Okay. If you combine sildenafil with nitrates, that means nitrates is going to increase the amount of NO. Okay. And then later on increase the amount of cyclic GMP and uh, phosphodiesters in, in, in inhibitors uh, uh, dipyridamol. Okay, I've written sildenafil, but this is dipyridamol as well. Dipyridamol is going to block this PDE. That means again increasing the amount of cyclic GMP. That means the in defect here with nitrates and sildenafil will be the same. Okay, and because of this, this will have supra additive effect. So. <coughs> It is very dangerous to combine these two drugs. Ultimately, unless you know what we are doing. Sometimes it may, might be beneficial. For example, we can, in many cases, we can, we, we combine calcium channel blocker with nitrates. There are beneficial things with that as well. They can have super effective. They might be toxic. Okay, for that, we are going to use it very, very cautiously. Okay. Combination of sildenafil and other phosphodiesterase inhibitors with organic nitrate vasodilators can cause extreme hypotension because of extreme vasodilatory reaction. Just now I told you this one. Okay. Another thing is about nitrates. Okay. Nitrates, I talked about this in the uh, cyanide one. So this is, is administered. Nitrates is administered into treat cyanide poisoning, guys. So though uh, the effect is not very uh, great, but if you use early enough and, and not for acute cyanide poisoning, okay, guys, in acute cyanide poisoning, the death is there within minutes. But cyanide poisoning can be chronic because cyanide poisoning is an industrial substance. Uh, it can expo get exposed to people in a very, very slow manner. In, th in those cases, there might be chronic cyanide poisoning. In those cases, we can use nitrates uh, by converting and adverse effect. You, if you remember, I talked about adverse effect of nitrate is creating meth hemoglobinemia, isn't it? But that very adverse effect here is used to treat cyanide poisoning. So how how it works? Nitrate is converting hemoglobin into meth hemoglobin. So we talked about that in the previous slide. So if there is meth hemoglobin, then the effect of cyanide is also combining with hemoglobin, isn't it? So, when there is meth hemoglobin and when cyanide comes by, which allows the binding of when cyanide comes by and there is already a, some amount of meth hemoglobin in your blood, then the these cyanide and meth hemoglobin will react and then combine themselves, getting cyanometh hemoglobin. Okay, cyanometh hemoglobin is the combination of meth hemoglobin and cyanide. And cyanometh hemoglobin is now non-toxic. Okay, it is non-toxic. You can see over here, uh, meth hemoglobin, then cyanide, uh, meth hemoglobin, and then uh, in many cases you are giving this for treatment of this chronic cyanide poisoning. Then you should add sodium thiosulfate. Okay, why you are you need to add sodium thiosulfate? Because the meth hemoglobin is not very stable substance. It will get released. This cyanide will get released within within hours. And again, it will give the symptoms. So what you need to do is, if you are using uh, sodium nitrate for this uh, cyanide poisoning, then use uh, sodium nitrate. And after some time, you use cyan, uh, sorry, uh, sodium 
thiosulfate. Okay, sodium thiosulfate will will again. What does it do? Is again it will break it down, making it with hemoglobin, and instead of getting cyanide, it will give sodium thiocyanate, which is non-toxic and it can get excreted out. Yeah, okay, so that is the treatment of cyanide poisoning. You can use nitrates to use cyanide poisoning, though the the thing with hemoglobin is adverse effect when you use it in mastinia. Sorry, if you use it in uh, for cardiac purpose. And then a, a question may arise. Okay, you have treated this cyanide poisoning adequately, but what about with hemoglobin anemia? So this methemoglobinemia again will give you hypoxia. Why? Because it is now the um, uh, blood is not able to transport oxygen efficiently because there are lots of methemoglobinemia globins roaming around. So what will you do? So it you will you can use methylene blue. If you I I hope you understand you know what this is. If you remember your 10 plus 2 or class 10, then you remember there we talked about um, there the curriculum talks about many indicators indicators one of the indicators is lithmus if you remember and the other one is methylene blue if you remember so these indicators which will detect the ph levels uh, is methylene blue and that methylene blue here is not for indication purpose but it is supplemental methemoglobin can be used uh, can be treated with supplemental oxygen okay and methylene blue restores the iron hemoglobin to its uh, reduced carrying state. That means it will release the meth out. Okay, so um, and then it will resume the normal uh, blood structure in that. So this is how nitrates will work in cyan cyan cyanide poisoning. So uh, this is from uh, I think uh, Goodman and Goldman. So this chart will show you the chemical structure as well as this. Uh, pharmacokinetic properties okay and, and 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 clinical uses so i'm not going to repeat everything i'm i'm um, everything i'm i have given you in the previous slides you can have a sn snapshot from that book so apart from nitrates we use other drugs okay other drugs for treatment of angina pectoris okay the first thing that we use is beta blockers okay so how does it work? Beta blocker, you have, you know, I'm not going to go detail in beta blocker. Okay, guys, uh, I have a few more minutes left. I'm going to finish it both this beta blocker and calcium channel blockers also in uh, minutes because we have already learned about this. So it's effective in reducing the severity and frequency of attacks in stable angina and improving survival in patients who have an MI. So <clears throat> what basically beta blocker does is it will it will make the heart beat and work in a reduced energy. Okay, it will slow down the heart rate. It will ease the uh, tension of the cardiomyocytes when it is stalled. That means the force of contraction is reduced. That is why overall demand of oxygen is reduced. But one thing you need to be careful is that because you are modulating the modulating or decreasing the uh, highest um, capability of your heart, you are not going to ask the patient to do vigorous exercises because the heart is not able to cope with that. Okay, uh, so heart is not going to get get faster if you run when you have beta blocker background because beta blocker is blocking your uh, beta receptors in your sinoatrial node and as every node. So that is why it can give your heart a good rest, but given that you should rest at that time. Okay, and if you do the both of these things then it will improve drastically the clinical significance okay but beta blockers uh, are very uh, not useful for prince metal okay very very important mcq question okay not useful for prince metal angina because in prince metal angina uh, this this uh, limiting the ability of the heart will not work Okay, prince metal is not because it's a reduced blood flow because of uh, atherosclerotic pass and it is not related to physical activity, so you don't use it. But uh, in sometimes, sometimes since beta is a beta blocker 
and beta 3 receptor is a vasoconstrictor vasodilator if you block this beta 3 receptor blood vessels may further spasm they can even or sometimes it may be spasmic further so because of that it might sometime worsen so if it is if it is prince metal or variant angina do not give beta blockers okay beta blockers sometimes have some adverse effect most of the times it doesn't work work timolol metoprolol and adrenolol timolol metoprolol adrenolol and propranolol have been shown to exert cardioprotective effects that means these drugs have cardioprotective they will further they will block stop the uh, degradation of heart function and heart structure further okay this, this is very uh, good in sense of that so decreases heart rate negative ionotropic effect and uh, decreased heart rate and contractility cause uh, increases in systolic ejection period and left ventricular in diastolic volume that means these alter, alter, alterations tend to increase oxygen demand okay again another another thing is there so i i if you understand then i will explain you this thing okay beta blockers will slow down the heart rate if slow if if you are slowing down this heart rate then you are having much more time to let the veins accumulate the blood in the ventricles okay so if it beats faster then the in diastolic volume is not much because the um, venous system is not pouring the blood um, in large volumes but that time that means if you if you if you open a tap and then leave for a long period of time then the vessel will fill up more if less period less vessel uh, less amount of liquid in will be there in the vessel isn't it same thing happens here ventricles are left there and given time because your heartbeat is now distancing each other the heartbeat is uh, beating slowly then the uh, your ventricles is getting time to get filled uh, in a in a more okay if that happens these will have some oxygen demand increased okay so but the significant is significance if you is that this decreased increased oxygen demand if you if if unless this decreased heart rate is very very slow the net effect will be decreased only not increased okay not increased but decreased only so this will compromise in some patients but it won't give you uh, high oxygen demand okay so increases the tolerance increases the tolerance to physical exercises decreases the frequency of severity of attack uh, they can be used prophylactically uh, and should be tapered off you need to stop okay you know that beta blockers should not be taken abruptly stopped abruptly uh, i talked about that in the previous classes as well and it is contraindicated in prince metal angina okay uses you can see unstable angina myocardial infarction everywhere you can use it but cautiously okay so calcium channel blocker last class we talked about is we, we have separated them into two parts dipins and non diadopyridines and non diadopyridines cfitipin and verapamil okay guys cfitipin and verapamil so you can you can see the heart uh, this heart rate they have they have very different approaches you can see verapamil will decrease the heart rate cfitipin will increase the heart rate so this will be very significant i am when i am talking about this okay decreases the heart rate what which will decrease the heart rate vera pamil will decrease the heart rate okay negative anotropic effect again um, uh, contractility this one so we are talking about now vera pamil okay and net effect will be decreased myocardial oxygen demand with vera pamil so that means we are using this calcium uh, decrease uh, heart uh, thing um myocardial infarction we use verapamil in in most of the cases that doesn't mean that we don't use dipins dipins also we use because dipins will increase a uh, decrease the preload and afterload if you remember so but i'm talking about this verapamil right now okay so but uh, dsps non cardiac selective ones nifedipins and, and amlodipine so they also work by arterial dilatation i just talked about this in the previous class but short acting ones like nifedipines you, you better don't use because 
Uh, it may aggravate myocardial ischemia because of reflex tachycardia. I talked about this many times. So amlodipine has less reflex tachycardia, but nifedipine, since it is very abruptly acting, fast acting, uh, then it will create a reflex tachycardia to very high uh, degree. Okay, because of that, because of that, CCBs, uh, short acting ones, shouldn't be used. Okay, but other CCBs like uh, other uh, these things can be prevent arterial splasm have additional benefit in Prince metal angina. So Prince metal angina beta blockers contraindicated, calcium channel blockers indicated. So calcium channel blocker you can use in angina, unstable angina, myocardial infarction, and even in Prince metal angina. So Nicorandil, I just talked about it. Nicorandil is a potassium channel opener. And since the potassium channel is opened, uh, the cell is never depolarized. And if it is never depolarized, the the, uh, the calcium channel in that is blocked. So this is just a calcium channel, indirectly acting calcium channel blocker. We are not going to talk it in detail. So last but not the least was diapiridamol. If you remember diapiridamol, this is the um, uh, drug you can see. It is not used. Why it is not used? So you can see the beakers over here. Right? Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So this is the last slide. Uh, yes, sir. You can see this. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, nitrates. You can see with without any drug, the one the branch which is atheromatous gets the less uh, less amount of blood. If you use nitrates, it will balance it out. Okay. You can see this collateral dilation is there, but with with this dipyridamol, what happens is collaterals is not dilated. Okay, guys. It will make dilatation all the vessels except these collaterals. And if they dilate, there will be very slight dilatation. But this will dilate the ones which are non-effective, uh, which are uh, normal and which are affected. That means you can see this is not dilated over here. OK, this is not dilated over here, but this is dilated. So because this this di diperidamol, basically it has high tendency, high capacity to dilate blood vessels in the coronary artery. But since it is, does not, um, it doesn't uh, discriminate. It it will have all the effects, all the vasodilatory action in all the parts. Then uh, this will prevent the flow from uh, the effect unaffected part to the affected part. Okay. So because of this, you can see. Even less amount of blood is there with the with the affected area. This is called coronary steel phenomena. The blood is stolen from the affected side and delivered into the non uh, non affected side. So please remember, write it down. The coronary steel phenomena is there with the dipyridamol. That is why we don't use regularly. Last but not the least, the combinations. Um, I'm going to show you this for a few seconds. You can see nitrates and beta blockers. Uh, uh, nitrates will vasodilate. Beta blockers uh, will will block their um, reflex tachycardia, so they can be used. Calcium channel blocker, slow DSPs, that means amlodipine and beta blockers can be used because uh, again it will block the uh, reflex tachycardia. Calcium channel blocker that is DSPs and nitrates can be used. Why? Because calcium channel blockers will dilate the arteries. Nitrates will dilate the blood vessels. They, they may have heightened effect, but you can use it cautiously. OK, but nitrates. Nitrates and calcium channel blockers and beta blockers can be supra additive used in very, very severe cases. OK, in very sorry, in very, very severe cases. So what happens here is nitrates will decrease the pre preload. Calcium channel blockers will decrease the afterload and both of them will have effect of reflex tachycardia and beta blockers will decrease the reflex tachycardia. Because of this, these all drugs can be combined. Only combination which is very no, not good is non DSPs, verapamil and beta blockers. Why? Beta blockers will tend to decrease the heart rate and decrease the uh, power of the heart. Non DSPs also do the same. They will have block it. OK, both depresses the SA and AV node, which will give you the very, very severe blockade of your heart. 
that much for today and we'll talk about uh, mi and we'll just few uh, initial classes i'll be repeating the things i just told you but the next class we'll be talking about mi so did you understand guys sir sir ah uh. Sir, can uh, selective Sir, beta can. one blocker be used in uh, prince metal selective one? No, because selectivity doesn't mean absolute. OK, it will have some effect in se even selective. Most selective dog, drugs, they will have, for example, we call it selective when 90% uh, of the effect is selective and still there will be 10% and it is negligible. But negligible here might count. OK, selective ones also will somehow block other receptors. Uh, beta 3 and other receptors so to make it uh, very safe we never use this drug in prince metal enzyme sir that sodium nitroprusside and nitrate uh, mechanism of action is same yeah they are from the same group sodium nitroprusside we, uh, you talked about uh, with uh, basalingapasar i think na? Uh, so these are all nitrate donors sodium nitroprusside is a nitrate donor and all the other uh, nitrite and nitrates like drugs they have all the same mechanism of action. They are NO donors, okay, EDRF donors. But that uh, sodium nitroprusside, why it can't be used in enzyme? Because because it doesn't discriminate this enzyme, coronary arteries, okay. It is uh, like dipyridamol. It will dilate all the blood vessels, including arteries, including veins, coronary, and affected, non-affected. All is same for um, sodium nitroprusside, and it is high efficacy drug. Because of that, you can get toxic quite easily, and we cannot we cannot isolate its effect where we need it. Because that because of that, we don't use sodium nitroprusside. But if you don't have um, nitroglycerin uh, and you have sodium nitroprusside, and the patient is dying because you didn't don't give the drug, then you can use it. There is no problem; it works. But the it, adverse effect might be high. It means sodium nitroprusside also so that coronary is still in. You cannot say exactly that the phenomena is coronary stealing because uh, like dipyridamol, it doesn't work in the peripheral arteries. Na? It only works in dipyridamol, only works in coronary artery. But this one works there as well as here. That means uh, the effect uh, is that it, it doesn't steal from there to there but it will make it normal. It, it, just like before it was without nitroprusside and after nitroprusside will be also the uh, it will be very similar. OK, but still uh, that means nitroprusside will increase the uh, increase the level of uh, blood flow in the coronary affected area as well as not coronary affected area, uh, but with proportion. So in that case, sometimes you can use because of that, but dipyridamol you never use. Because dipyridamol will always show that steel phenomena. Thank you, sir. OK. If any more questions, you can ask. If no question, then I think it's already 11 and 10. You have ne next class to start.